Hello guys, how's it going? So welcome to my review of Super Dragon Ball Heroes episode 47. Episode 7 in the Ultra Guard mission arc that's going on right now. I kind of wasn't expecting an episode to drop today, but here we are with a subversion. So that was a neat little surprise. Well, I will say this episode felt like set up. We got a lot of action when it comes to like Gogeta versus Broly and obviously... Aos and Goku are out match right now, but they're teaming up against De Demi Gras, so this is kind of cool to see. But let's pick up right from the start, and it doesn't take long. But basically, at the time, Nest and Demi Gras decides to switch the place up and actually create, in Aos' own words, he's, ch he's changing the fabric of space. So that was actually pretty neat. He changed, it looks like he changed the style of the area to like a more wastelandish type of area, creating the vil villains he released in the previous episode, the multiple villains, I should point out. And I mentioned this in the comments, but I'm glad it got highlighted here in this episode. So basically, we see a bunch of villains return, kind of like what we saw with Omega Shamrock, only much more of them. We saw Brawl at the end of the last episode. Before, I, I, I did see Ribeiro anywhere, so we don't get the Aos versus Ribeiro. I hope she does something, I'll say that, on, unless she just took off off screen. We see the villains manifest in, in this dark aura that the Demi Gras released into the air and we see the multiple villains again. More importantly, we see each area, the four areas, and we see that each fight we see the fighters that actually are taking on these villains. So in, in one area it, it focuses on the the ice area where Yamcha and Hit are at. I think I think Vegeta's at the same place along with the I, I guess the Glass sisters. We still don't get names for them, so I'm hoping they do something as well, because they're confronted right now, but they're confronted by the return of Shield and Finn. Now, I don't expect them to do much against Hit, but that could be kind of interesting for, if nothing else, for you have just something to do, because he's not backing down, he's not running away, getting scared. That may change in the next episode, but right now he's standing his ground. It also gives Hit something to do, so that... Like I said, it also it could go, give the mirror, the ice mirror sisters something to do, since one of them's infatuated with Yamcha, so maybe she'll back him up. So that'd be kind of cool in that aspect. Then we cut over to where the two Piccolos are at, along with Gohan. This is one of the most intriguing parts because we see all the time breakers minus Toa and Mira. So we we see Gravy, Deborah, Poutine. Salsa and Shroom, which is interesting because they were helping Gohan and Goku and Vegeta, among others, in the previous arc in the Big Bang mission. Now they're against them, and they're completely under the command of of Demi Gras right now. So obviously it's manipulation at some at that part. But it's like all of those who are allied with the Supreme Kai of Time, go ham and kill them without mercy. So we got. Battles of survival about to take place right now. The two go two Piccolos and Gohan going up against the Time Breakers. That's actually pretty cool. And it gives that, like I said, those are the characters I want to see highlighted, focused on in this arc. Alongside the Time Patrol. Gohan and Goten. Speaking of which, we actually go to the area where future Gohan and future Chunks are at right now. And they're confronted by, by Super Android 13, Bojack and Slog. There's also another development which I'll get into because it may tie into this. Future Gohan and Future Trunks teaming up. That's actually pretty cool. Time Patrol Trunks and Future Gohan teaming up. Then we go over to Vegeta who's, been, who's about to fight Margin Buu. The, the first Margin Buu that we saw in Dragon Ball. So that's actually pretty cool. It's a cool callback. Margin Vegeta versus Margin Buu. So that could, that could be pretty good for Vegeta. Then we go to J Jiren who's... Who's literally looking up at Baby from GT and Hachiak from the, the and he was the villain for the plan to eradicate the Saiyan special. So that was actually that's actually pretty cool. He got to see Hachiak again. I, I believe he was in the Prison Planet arc in the manga, so it was actually cool they actually included him here. But I mean against Jiren it's gonna be I mean, no contest. Like G uh, Baby, that's gonna be kind of interesting. It's cool that Jiren it go up against top tier fighters like that. Hopefully it leads to something epic. We get to see more from Jiren. Then it just cuts to a shot of Perfect Cell. Who's also under under, under the control of Demi Gras. 
Now, the thing to know here is the area where we see the Super Android 13 slug and Bojack, and I say that because the three people with the auras around them, that's the only area where three enemies are staring down, now, future Gohan and future Trunks. So then it cuts to a shot of Cell walking in, looking in the background, looking menacing as all hell. So that, that's just my prediction. That's where Cell is at right now. With, he's in the area where future Gohan and Time Patrol Trunks are at right now, about to team up against Slug Super Android 13 and Teen and Bojack. So that, that'd be kind of interesting if Cell gets involved. Now, I was assuming he could also show up at the area where Gohan and Piccolo are teaming up because of the movie, maybe. Gohan and Piccolo, the two Piccolos teaming up against the Time Breakers. That's kind of interesting anyway, so I don't think you need Cell there. Meanwhile, back, back at the main event, we got Gogeta versus Brawly. Now, this is interesting because... I don't think we've gotten Gogeta versus Brawly at all in Super Dragon Ball Heroes, at least I'm, unless I'm mistaken, but I didn't see this in the De Dark Demon Realm mission. We definitely didn't get this in the Big Bad mission because it was pretty much two versions of Vegito going up against Brawly. This could be a first in Super Dragon Ball Heroes that we're getting Gogeta versus Brawly, and this is both got in Super Saiyan 4 Limit Breaker, by the way, so this is pretty epic. So it pretty much starts off both Brawly and Gogeta going in, but then Gogeta landed... Lands a punch that sends Brawly to the ground. Brawly recovers and immediately charges in, but tries to land two attacks, but Gogeta dodges that like a boss. One of the coolest attacks of the entire episode. So he actually spins around and kicks Brawly in the face. Then Brawly recovers and launches multiple key blasts. He spans multiple key blasts, firing them at Gogeta. Gogeta actually counters. Now, this was a complete reference to the Dragon Ball Super Brawly movie. So, I don't know if you guys picked up on this. You probably did. Because of how popular it was. But, Gogeta uses... What, what? Before he charges up his, and fires his attack, he uses the same pose he used in the Dragon Ball Super Brawly movie. When he was going up against Brawly. When he uses the explosion. He does the same pose here. Then he fires the multiple key blasts. Only this time, they were red, not blue. So, then it cuts to Aos and Goku teaming up against Demigrar. I mean, they're pretty much overmatched at this point. So, Demigra immediately, after powering up, teleports right behind Aos. And I, I was getting kind of worried that, okay, they're going to kill off Aos right now. But no, he just pummels the, pummels the hell out of Aos, just knees her in the gut, and then punches her in the face. That was brutal. This is what you want out of Demigra, by the way. As a villain, this is what you want to see. Then Goku fires a, a Kamehameha after going Super Saiyan Blue. Does absolutely nothing because because Demigra counters with Dark Reflector. Now he says, like, I'm going to give your attack right back at you, but amplify it with the power of darkness. It, that was kind of broken because he sent Goku goes attack right back. And then Goku, noticing the Supreme Kai times there, go, goes into King Kai first or Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken to, like, try and overpower Demigra. It does not work because Demigra is way too powerful. Overpowers Goku and just that you just see an explosion in the area. While this was going on, and this is just kind of smart in a way because Aos charges up an attack and uses Eternal Labyrinth to freeze Demi, or at least attempt to freeze Demi Gra in its place. Kind of reminds me what Kronoa could do, so it just makes sense that Aos could do the same. Does not work because immediately Demi Gra, like the troll, smiles and just but breaks out of that no, like it's no problem. And then that's pretty much how the episode ends with Demigra powering up. So obviously, individually, Aos and Goku don't really stand much of a chance unless they team up or unless they get some backup. Because right now, unless they heal, they're they healed. And that's why what Demigra is doing is brilliant as a villain because he's, he's picking the bones where they're at the most vulnerable because they, they're pretty much maxed out from the earlier fight from two episodes ago. So this is where Demigra gets to shine as a villain. Like I said, the most interesting part is the fact that we get time breakers that are staring down two Piccolos and, and Gohan from Dragon Ball Super. Just not to get you confused because there's a lot of characters here. But the fact that we still have the time breakers in the previous arc. Now, like I said, minus Toa and Mira, which I thought was kind of, which I think was great. It was a good move because we don't need Toa and Mira getting overshadowed in this arc. By the amount of villains. We got enough villains. We got enough people. In this tournament. You introduced characters like Jiren. Hit. 
Vegeta. Like this is a good, this is a good move by releasing these villains because it gives the it gives the participants that actually did nothing in this tournament so far something to do. What before we get to the final stage? Now this would be a good cutoff point to actually focus on what's going on elsewhere rather than just focus on Demigra versus Aos and Goku. They're not really much of a match, so you can cut back to that if you want to. If you want to leave us on a cliffhanger, so. So, yeah, I, I like the direction this is going in. You bought these characters in this tournament for a reason, so use them with these villains. Like I said, we got the pair-ups. We know where each of the villains are at right now. It's just how are they going to be utilised. Now, when it comes to, like, there's certain instances, like I said, with Toa and Mira not involved, confirmed, that means they're going to have their own chance to shine later down the road. I assume added to the mix and got overshadowed. Now, we do, like I said, an intriguing part of this is we didn't see Ribeiro, but she could play a role very quickly. But I'd, I definitely feel like there's going to be a switch to, that goes against Demi Gra because he's way too in command right now. He has all the villains he needs. They're going to get smashed anyway because the pa the villains they're going up against are, are leagues above them. Like Margin Vu versus Vegeta. Like Vegeta's going to smash Boo. That version of Boo. He's much stronger than he was when he was Margin Vegeta. Like Jiren versus Hachiak and Baby. Like, I know Baby's a popular character, but they're not going to do much against Jiren. I'm sorry. Unless Baby manages to actually try and possess Jiren. That'd be a neat little twist. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, this is actually pretty cool seeing these villains and hopefully give them a purpose. Like I said, we saw Cell, the only one who wasn't fighting anyone, but he's in the area where... Future Gohan and Time Patrol trumps are at right now. So, speaking of the Time Patrol, so the title for the next episode is a, is a union that transcends space and time, and that also says the fist of justice that smashes evil. That can mean one of two things. A union means that could relate to Gogeta diffusing and and Zeno Goku and Zeno Vegeta and Super Saiyan Four use a dragon fist like they did against Gen Dark Genem, but only this time against Broly. That's my first thought. Or we could get another fusion, and that actually, I'd be. This would be pretty lit, and that's if Time Patrol, Gohan, and Goten show up at the place to back up future Gohan and Time Patrol trunks to help them out, because Cell's there already, cause they'd be kind of in trouble. Although Trunks is a Super Saiyan guard, but he's also maxed out after fighting future Gohan. So that'd be a great way to. In Highlight and focus on the remaining members of the Time Patrol outside of Goku and Vegeta. The characters that need it, like the most is Goten and Gohan. That This would be pretty awesome because we have Time Patrol Gohan. I can't believe they haven't revealed this yet, but if you if you know Super Dragon Ball Heroes, you know Go Time Patrol Gohan could go Super Saiyan 4. And you also have Goten, who's by far the most misutilized character out of the Time Patrol. Again... It could lead to it could lead into that because of the movie of Trunks and, and maybe because of the manga as well. Maybe and Goten perform a perform a fusion technique and we add, perform a fusion dance and we actually get the adult version of Gotenks for the first time in Dragon, Super Dragon Ball Heroes in the anime. That'd be that that'd be pretty sick. There's certain characters they're doing really good with even without fighting. Yamcha immediately comes to mind. Like even though it may be a gag to some. Like, the truth of the matter is, he's being handled much better than he ever was in Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super. I, I don't think he's even a factor in GT. Vegeta versus Majin Buu is really intriguing, considering how how much stronger Vegeta is. But it's still an intri intriguing matchup, because Vegeta is, uh, is also fighting a Majin Buu that's getting a power-up because of Demigra. The other theory I have, it's nothing to do with the title, but I we really didn't get able to see what happened with, with the aftermath of... Bardock and Goku, right? We we seen in this episode. It looks like Future Gohan and Future and Time Patrol Trunks are going to team up. So after fighting, so that's number one. So who's to say that Bardock isn't going to show up to lend a hand to Goku against Demigra, and that gives time for Aos and Goku some breathe a, a chance to breathe and actually recoup. I think that'd be better if the if, if they hold off on that to the end because that's going to be a final fight anyway. It's going to be a final fight because if it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Demigra. Is he going to go down? Is he going to be destroyed by Goku? 
by the end of this arc because I, I viewed Demigra in a way that the same way I view Toa in the matter. It doesn't matter pow, about power scaling here. Like they're both mainstays, they have been mainstays in the franchise of Super Dragon Ball Heroes since the beginning of the game. So Toa's been the same. So she's been in for a long time. So is Demigra. So it's gonna be really hard to see if they pull the trigger and actually kill off Demigra here. They can bring him back, certainly. But I don't think we're seeing the best of Demigra right now. So I don't think you need to. If that does happen, then you save that for the end and focus on what's going on elsewhere. Really what, what I want to see going forward. And I, I said the moment this tournament was introduced into this arc, I didn't know it was going to happen, but I said what goes on behind the scenes is going to be more, more intriguing than, what, than the actual tournament itself. So this could be a good payoff for the, a lot of these characters that are, that are participating in this tournament. So they have a chance to, to do something against these villains, so yeah. That'd be kind of cool to see that in the next episode. Well, I thought it was an okay episode, nothing, nothing too crazy, or, although it did the one thing that I was hoping. And it sends off the villains to, to give the other characters a chance to do some things, so whether or not what that leads to, I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Please tell me yours in the comments below. That's going to do it for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Like the review if you did a thumbs up. I appreciate that. I appreciate all the support when it comes to this, these reviews. Subscribe channel for more Super Dragon World Heroes. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.